Young world. As soon as you enter, hit the like button. That's the first thing. Hit the goddamn like button. But I read this book about, uh, or should I say, I listened to the, a book. Now that I drive trucks, I be on the road a lot, so I be listening to audio books now. It's like a new thing I, I picked up on that I've been doing consistently. But um, I listened to a book. First was the um, the Laws of Human Nature. So I heard this, there was a little segment in the Laws of Human Nature about John D. Rockefeller. Um, Cause he was like talking about him a lot during that book, little segments of his life, of his personality, and stuff like that. Which led me to listen to a book called um, John D. Rockefeller, an analysis of the original Titan. So when I was listening to this book, I was like, damn, this dude really has, Jay-Z really has a lot in common, you know what I'm saying, with the start of how John D. Rockefeller came about. Because when uh, Rockefeller, he blew up, when he first really started making money, he, he had an oil refinery company. Him, a dude named uh, something Clark, and another dude last name Andrew. So what happened was these three dudes that owned the company, Rockefeller, Clark, and Andrew. Over time, I mean, the company was a hit. It was making massive money with this oil company, oil refinery company. Over time, though, little stuff started happening behind the scenes. Little beefs were starting to emerge between Rockefeller and Clark. Clark made a couple comments about Rockefeller. Um, when he rebranded the company, they put um, Rockefeller's name wasn't in it, you know what I'm saying? Even though he was part owner, so little things like that. And it got to the point where the dude Clark was so aggravated with Rockefeller that he was blatantly doing and saying things to try to get under Rockefeller's skin. You know what I'm saying? To get a reaction out of Rockefeller. But Rockefeller was just playing it mad cool. As, as so it seems. You know what I'm saying? It looked like he wasn't affected by nothing that dude was doing to try to throw him off balance and try to throw him off his square. Keep that going that weren't so apparent to the point where he, he basically put the dude Clark into the position to come out right and say, you know what? This is not going to work with us together. You know what I mean? Um, as partners, we can't move forward. So Clark saying this to Rockefeller, thinking he's, he's thinking that this is going to make Rockefeller fall in line because in Clark's mind, he's saying there ain't no way in the world that Rockefeller got enough money and has enough influence and resources that can sustain this company on his own or do something without me because I'm really the bread, the, uh, the money bag in the situation. Or so Clark thought, you know what I'm saying, about Rockefeller. Clark didn't know. Because behind the scenes, as Clark was making these little comments through the years about Rockefeller, Rockefeller was behind the scenes putting together a team of bankers to back him. Bankers and investors that was going to back him to make this move when the time came. So instead of Rockefeller coming out right and talking about Clark, you know what I'm saying, dissing them back in the public and stuff like that, he put Clark into the position to where, just like kind of with Jay-Z and Dane Dash, into the position to where Clark would suggest that they break up. But like I said, on some not really taking it serious because he don't think Rockefeller can survive without him. So when he said that, when Clark said to Rockefeller, we should part ways, Rockefeller jumped on it like, yeah, we should. So that caught Clark off guard, you know what I'm saying? So when they decided to dissolve the company, they, went to, they had an auction for the company. They all went to um, try to buy the company. They went to bid on the company to get control of the company. So inside the bid, Rockefeller ended up offering, you know, Clark offered like $72,000, which was something that was astronomical, you know what I'm saying? Something that he wasn't even trying to pay himself. Or, or willing to pay. Rockefeller came right back with 72500 So at that point, Clark was like, I guess this joker got something we don't know about. He must got money we didn't we ain't heard about. So Clark fell out, and that's how Rockefeller bought the company, Standard Oil, and had it for himself. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the same thing with Dame Dash and Gene. It's kind of like the same type of story, how that came about. Dane Biggs and Jay-Z with three people running the company, owned the company. They parted ways, you know what I'm saying? And what Rockefeller also done after that was started buying up 
all the small, smaller road companies. Rockefeller was doing stuff like, if you didn't team up with him, he would drop his price of oil so low that he wouldn't even make money off it. But he was dropping it so low that you couldn't compete because you're not big enough to compete with him. With the, he's bleeding money out, he can he could afford to do that. But if you're a smaller company, you can't afford to do that. So he would run you out of business like that. And after he ran you out of business like that, what he would do is come back and buy your business after he already exhausted all your funds. Basically put you into a situation to where you got no choice but to side with this joker now because he ran the price of oil way down because he's able to do that. He can bleed that long longer than you can because he got more money. And these are the type of tactics that Rockefeller was doing. It's like with Jay-Z with Rock Nation coming out and buying all these, putting all these rappers on the contract that have been around for years. Jokers that were considered to be, you know what I'm saying, quote unquote competition, at least maybe not enemies, but other rappers in the game he was competing with. He made so many moves behind the scenes and did so much grimy stuff that he put everybody in the where it's like, you got to side with me or you, there's no more real estate out here for you to buy because I already have it all, basically, in a nutshell. That's kind of what Jay-Z did to the game with everybody else. And I was just listening to this book and I'm just like, damn, this is some grimy stuff, like the way this happened. And then anytime somebody came up with a tactic or like this one dude on there, Oh, I forget his name, what company it was, finally came up with a strategy to defeat Rockefeller by, by um, because the way Rockefeller controlled the oil was that he owned all the pipelines of Pennsylvania, where they was at. He owned all the pipelines that was going from point A to point B to where it's being sold at. So since he owned all the pipelines, any other oil company had to do business with him at some point in order to move the oil. So what this other dude finally did, came about, he figured out a way, he was like, instead of going through all that, I'm just gonna build my own pipeline directly from Pennsylvania to New York, I believe it was, or whatever it was that, to go, to totally cut Rockefeller out of the whole plan. They don't need him, that's the only way somebody can come and beat him. So that's what dude did, and everywhere dude was building, Rockefeller started buying land everywhere that dude was gonna have to go with this, with this oil pipe, with this pipeline. Rockefeller was buying the land ahead of time before dude got there, before his company got there with the equipment to start digging to put the pipe in the ground. Rockefeller was buying the land way ahead of time, so he kept having to maneuver the the, um, the route of where the pipe was going, you know what I'm saying, which he, he, which he ended up doing. He, he got around it. Rockefeller bought land in front of where he was going next. He had to readjust and reroute the pipe. Long story short, dude got, he did it, he pulled it off and then got the pipeline all the way down to New York, I believe it was, wherever it had to be. But by the time the Joker did all this, Rockefeller used the tactics I said earlier, he dropped his price down so goddamn low that dude went through all that trouble and still couldn't even sustain it or compete because Rockefeller just dropped the price of oil. And then Rockefeller went and made a campaign. Another, another company popped up in certain communities it was a called Republic Oil or something like that. That was directly in um, in combat with Rockefeller. It was like kind of leading. The, it was leading the charge of everybody who Rockefeller beat or or out with it. You know what I'm saying? Or bought them out or strong armed them throughout the years with their company. This company popped up and inherited all Rockefeller's beef because they were always on the same page. They're like, yeah, we got to get Rockefeller out of here. We got to take him down. So this company, I think it was called Republic and Oil whatever it was called, popped up, recruited all Rockefeller's enemies to be on a team with them to try to take him down, started making ground in certain little areas. They was going around little towns in America, selling oil, selling kerosene, this and that and that and this, spreading the propaganda, um, the Rockefeller hate propaganda, try to overrun him. Come to find out, <laughs> Rockefeller owned this company, this Republic of Oil. He's the one that started the company. You know what I'm saying? To control the opposition against him. So you, so what, he, and this is the, what I'm saying, this is this ties into how this everything is running today. Rockefeller created a whole company as controlled opposition that if you didn't mess with Rockefeller, if you had beef with Rockefeller, here's another option for you to use because it was either you hated Rockefeller, either you was doing business with him and you was down with him, or you hated him because he strong armed you out of the out of the industry to the point where you couldn't compete, so you had to sell to him. And by that time came 
if you took that route, he already bled you so much that your company was worth nothing when he bought when he took when he bought it over. So like I said, he created a whole lane, I mean a whole company to recruit everybody that was against him to gain momentum. This company emerged, nobody even knew that Rockefeller started that company that was supposed to be allegedly against him to control the opposition. So that's what I said. This is how this stuff runs today. You think you got options? I ain't gonna go too far into saying certain words. I just got my monetization back, you know what I'm saying? So a little joke is gonna sit there and try to stay monetized. Um, you be thinking you have options and whatever it is, whether it's like some political type stuff, whether it's companies, whether it's McDonald's and Burger King, whether it's door sale and Energizer, you be thinking you got options, but the same jokers own all of it together. That's the thing everybody's missing. All these Exxon Mobil, all this stuff came about because Rockefeller violated antitrust monopolizing laws, so he had to break up Standard Oil, in which all he did was make smaller companies, name them something different, put a straw person probably in charge of it, or a family member, or a different person, but it really is all coming back to Rockefeller. And that's what I said about the whole Rock Nation thing. Jay-Z bought out all these artists that he was in competition with coming up, you know what I'm saying? And what Rockefeller was doing was buying these oil companies out just to even, just to destroy some of them, not even really do a tent and doing nothing with them. And who have you seen out of all these people that joined Rock Nation from back in the day that we grew up watching all these rappers? What of them that joined Rock Nation did anything? We haven't really heard nothing about none of these jokers since they joined Rock Nation. They all pretty much just disappeared, like, Nothing significant, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, I just, like I said, I read that book, so I was just sitting here, I was like, we all talk about the rock, everybody that's on the little quote-unquote conspiracy stuff, we be talking about the Rockefellers and the Carnegies and all this type of stuff, the Rothschilds. And, um, and they was talking about how Rockefeller doing business with the Rothschilds, but we don't be knowing all the details and the, the intricate stuff about it, you know what I'm saying? So once you hear certain little things, you'd be like, damn, this now it makes other stuff make sense, you know what I'm saying? So that's just all went a little tad a little story real quick. Little jokers monetized again, so participate, hit that goddamn like button, watch these damn videos, you know what I'm saying? Even if you don't like them, watch a couple minutes of it just for the ad and then click off it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's all I want to say about the situation. Well, Brian's running the shop, dude. How you doing?